Hello everyone and welcome back to another modding tutorial. Today we will be learning how to use the Minecraft development plugin. This plugin for IntelliJ IDEA will assist in setting up our modding workspace. I understand that I have already released videos for doing this manually. I have made videos on both the manual and automatic procedures for two main reasons. Reason one, I believe it is important to understand the interworkings of what is happening inside your IDE, and I would like my viewers to be well informed and as knowledgeable as possible. Reason two, the Minecraft development plugin, which I will be referring to as the MC Dev plugin, was experiencing issues on my machine. I have worked out the kinks and hope to spare my viewers from the trouble of fixing it. MC Dev is a very easy tool to use and can help tremendously for making mods in the long run. You will need IntelliJ IDEA for this, the setup of which is described in my video on IntelliJ IDEA and Java Dev Kit setup. Link will be in the description. Introduction aside, let's get right into it. Start off by installing the Minecraft development plugin. This can be found in the plugins tab. Navigate to the marketplace up here and search for the Minecraft development plugin. Click install and you are ready to go. Quick side note, if you are already inside a project, you can close the project via file, close project, or you can also navigate to file, settings, and then navigate down to plugins and follow the same procedure as before. Now you will want to close out any open projects and click on new project. You will see a list of applications down on the left side here. Be sure to click on Minecraft. I will go over setting up both Forge and Fabric modding workspaces in this video. Even if you are here for just one or the other, I recommend you stick around for both of them as it is important to learn thine enemy. Feel free to skip to the number on the screen for the Forge setup if you are not interested in Fabric. To create a Fabric mod, click on Fabric Mod and then click Next. The group ID is meant to be unique to your project and is meant to reflect the reverse of a domain that you control. If you are not the owner of a domain, no worries, although unconventional, you can use your name and mod name instead. I will be using com.markora.tutorial, since this is a tutorial mod, and my name is Markora. The artifact ID is going to set the name of your jar file export and will also be your mod ID, so be sure to make this something you don't mind typing a million times and make sure that it is relevant to your mod's content. In my case, I will be using the same mod ID as my last tutorial, which is Tutorial Mod. The version is going to be the version of your mod, and assuming you are creating a new mod, you can leave it at 1.0 snapshot. Little side note, the group ID will correspond to your mod's package structure inside the mod file. Go ahead and click Next. Now, this is very important. You must use the exact values I provide here, otherwise you will experience a never-ending stream of unsolvable issues that are bound to maximize frustratedness and cause a hostile coding work environment. Do not fear, Markora is here, and I have figured out the magic combination. In the far future, I will be adding new values to a list of combinations providing the best modding environment to my viewers. I'll be sure to include these numbers in the description of this video. The Minecraft version, of course, is going to be 1.16.5. The yarn version must be 1.16.5 plus build.5. Beware, do not use the snapshot build.5 here. I have tested this and it will not work. You need to scroll down and find specifically 1.16.5 build.5, otherwise this whole project will go up in smoke. Here it is, it takes a little while to find, but be sure you click on this one if you plan on using my setup. Loader version must be set to 0.11.2. This is the same thing as before. It must be set to this value. And finally, the loom version must be set to 0.6 snapshot. This one will also be difficult to find, but trust me, you are saving yourself from a world of frustration by doing this. Once your values exactly match the ones I have on screen, you can keep environment at both, use mixins checked, keep this checked, it is very useful, and your license can stay at MIT. The Fabric API version you may play around with if you wish, do so at your own risk, as there may be compatibility issues. I highly recommend using the one I have on screen here as it has been tested by yours truly and works as intended. Set the description, authors, and website as you please. If you have a repository link, you may include that as well. The authors tab must be filled with a comma separated list. If this is not your thing, you can always leave it blank and add in your authors manually. This is covered in my manual setup video for Fabric. Click next and then set the project name. This should be relevant to your mod's eventual contents. For me, it is going to be Markora Tutorial. 
My advice is to click on these three dots here, create a new folder, and then name it the same as your project name with an added API version and Minecraft version. Go ahead and click finish, and it will take a little while to set up. You can click on load Gradle project here. IntelliJ should do this automatically, but if you so choose, go ahead and click on it. You can look at the background tasks by clicking on this show all tab down here, and just be patient. It takes my computer five to 10 minutes. After Gradle is finished doing its thing, you must, and I know this sounds a little silly, but you need to restart IntelliJ IDEA. This can also be accomplished by clicking on Build and refreshing the project by clicking on this little refresh button over here. This is usually unnecessary. I've found I can do without it, but it is always a good idea to restart IDEA entirely to avoid any bugs or runtime errors. Make sure you do not restart it before Gradle has finished setting up your workspace. Just make sure there are no processes going on down here, and then you can click out of IntelliJ. Open it back up, and here you will see your finished workspace. You will see your main class, Tutorial Mod, here, and all of your run tasks up here. You are now ready to begin development, finally. You can now navigate to the play button up here, and you will find that the client and server run configurations are already built for you. How convenient. Click on the client and press the play button to run your client for the first time and check for errors. This here is the ideal way to start your client. Using the run client option in the build tab down here, fabric, run client, is fully functional, but for development, this is not its intended use. If you have the option available to you, be sure to use this run client option up here by the play button. While you are waiting, here's a useful tip. If you happen to have collapsed folders like this, you can right click on project and select flatten packages. Then you will have each folder laid out like this. I prefer it this way, but many people prefer it with flattened packages instead. You can see our game starts up just fine. That's all there is to it for Fabric. You've now set up your modding workspace for Fabric 1.16.5. All right now, moving on to Forge. Let it be known that Forge setup is far easier than Fabric setup in this plugin. This is likely attributed to the fact that Forge has been around for many more years and the devs have had a long time to perfect it. Finding the proper values for fabric was a huge hassle for me and consumed a monumentous amount of time that I could have spent manually setting up the system and modding. It is my hope that my provided values will save you this trouble and my viewers will become great modding masters without the sacrifice of time and brain power required to perfect this setup. All right, so let's get started. Go ahead and click on new project. Go down to Minecraft, click on forge mod. I will repeat the same information as last time for those who skipped the fabric portion. The group ID is meant to be unique to your project and is meant to reflect the reverse of a domain that you control. If you are not the owner of a domain, no worries, although unconventional, you can use your name and mod name instead, like so. The artifact ID is going to set the name of your jar file export, and it can be anything you want. It should be relevant to the name of your mod's contents and mod ID. This artifact ID is going to be your mod ID. You want to make it something you don't mind typing a million times. For me, it will be tutorial mod. The version is the version of your mod, and assuming you are creating a new mod, you can leave it at 1.0 snapshot. You can get rid of the snapshot part if you like, but this works for me. Go ahead and click next. The mod name I will keep at tutorial mod. You can leave the main class name if you like. You all may know my preference is to keep it at main. So I will rename the tutorial mod class to main. Forge version I will set to the last version I have worked with, which is 36.1.4. If you experience any problems with the Forge loader, you can adjust this as well to my recommendation. Feel free to try some of the other versions. I have found that more often than not, the Forge ones are compatible with each other, whereas Fabric is a little more finicky. We will keep the MCP version as it is, and finally keep the Minecraft version at 1.16.5. Set the description, authors, and website as you please. The authors tab must be filled with a comma separated list. If this is not your thing, you can always leave it blank and add in authors manually. This is covered in my manual setup video for Forge. If you have a website and update URL, you may include those as well. You can go ahead and set the project name. For me, it will be Mark or a Tutorial. As always, I recommend creating a new folder in your Forge directory or wherever you keep your mods that reflects the same project name, Mark or a Tutorial, and then include the Minecraft version MC 1.16.5 and then the API, which is Forge. Be sure to select the folder you've just created, and then go ahead and click on Finish. 
You'll want to wait a couple of minutes for Gradle to set up your project. It took mine around 5 to 10 minutes. If you get a notification in the bottom right corner here asking if you would like to load the Gradle build scripts, you can run them. However, IntelliJ will do this automatically, so if the notification disappears before you click it, no worries. Wait until the background tasks finish, and then you can navigate to the build tab down below to see if the build was successful. If the build fails, you can click on this refresh button here, or you can also opt to go to tasks, build, and then double click the build task here. This can also be accomplished by going to the terminal window and then running the command gradle build. This is not necessary for mine as the build was successful as I hope it is also successful for you. Assuming you made it out of the build setup alive, you can finally run your client for the first time by going to this run tab up here, click the drop down menu, and choose Run Client. This is the proper way to run your client during development and is the preferred method to using the FG Runs Run Client method down here. If you encounter any issues with the Run Client method up at the top, you can try clicking this one down here to see if it works. Like I said in past videos, they have similar functionality but are not exactly the same in many cases. We can go ahead and run the client here by pressing the green play button and Minecraft loads without any issues. If you click on the Mod tab, you'll see our description and other values here. I will be making more videos specific to Fabric and Forge very soon. I felt that going over the MC Dev plugin first would help some of my viewers who have been struggling with assembling the workspace manually. The plugin was brought to my attention by this absolute legend down in the comment section of my Fabric video. Special thanks to Brighton Massey for this suggestion. I have actually been getting many viewer requests, and I am doing my best to satisfy them all. I really appreciate the positivity and encouragement I see in the comments, and I am answering questions down in the comments to the best of my ability. I have been getting some very good questions, many of which have inspired me to begin work on new videos. I will prioritize viewer requests in accordance with the time asked, viewer sentiment, topic complexity, projected video length, and subject difficulty. Alright, that's it for this video, hope you enjoyed, and I hope this was helpful in teaching you how to use the Minecraft development plugin. Stay tuned for future videos where I will go more in depth in modding both Fabric and Forge. That's all for today, this has been Mark Aura, and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.